What's up, everyone? Welcome to another episode of Dateable, a show all about modern dating where we dig into the three whys. Why, why, why? Why people do the things they do, why people think the way they do, and why people react the way they do when it comes to modern dating. This episode is all about turbo relationships. I feel like oh, so many yes. people can relate to this during this time. Well, this term was invented during this time. So it's basically yeah. just like fast tracking. So I think there was this amazing meme that was just like a normal relationship, you know, like month one, maybe we go on a trip together, but two, we meet our friends and then the turbo relationship is like, no, but all happens in like a week. We're ready to go. We're ready to say I love you and move in together. And that's basically <laughs> what happened to our guests. Everything happened in one <laughs> week. There's like no DTR conversation, no waiting around for people to text back. You're just like, let's go, go, go. Let's <laughs> do this damn thing, which is kind of nice, right? You always talk yeah. about the fail fast mentality, Julie. And I think this, that's what turbo relationships are. I mean, we've talked about this before that, you know, like one of the challenges before with modern dating is that people were kind of half in, half out, like this game of relationship chicken. So, you know, like this one, uh, we're super excited to hear from our guest, Kevin. He talks about just, you know, his month long kind of like virtual mm -hmm. romance, essentially. And then he flew across the country to meet in real life. And what's interesting, though, about this one, we had our couple, Natalie and Josiah, from the very start of season season um, 11 if you remember from the TikTok the time of TikTok yes and I think they're still going strong which is amazing and they had Good a similar them. scenario that they just spent all this time FaceTiming he like flew across the country mm -hmm. they road tripped and then same with Kevin here I think though the difference was and I mean this is really just the reality right it's like a 50 50 shot and I think what we talk about today is that the downside is that you can build up this false intimacy and it's a little too much too soon or too fast too soon but the conversation really stems from should you pursue a turbo relationship is this something that we should stay away from them from um especially during this time is it does it stem from this feeling of loneliness mm -hmm. or is it something that we should do more in real life in modern romance and um, even after the pandemic should we just all try turbo relationships get into relationships and if I they don't work so. get out <laughs> i think so because it's like we talk about today it's like some of the stuff that he found out it wasn't it was lifestyle differences and that stuff's not going to go away so i think sometimes when you're only seeing someone like once a week it's hard to like really get to know them and it's just been a fascinating time i think outside of this whole like love story that we talk about he does t there's a lot in here that I thought was super interesting of just like the loneliness and the feelings mm. that have come from this. And I know like even we heard in our Facebook group, and I thought this was fascinating. Like one of our members, Dawn, she put up a comment about just like learning to, our favorite term, master date, basically <laughs> date yourself. And she was saying that she, I mean, she's engaged, she has children. So it's mm -hmm. not like she's not with someone, but like her children sometimes aren't with her because they're with her ex or like her um, mm -hmm. fiance is working. So it's like there's always going to be times in your life that you have to be alone. And I think this time of our lives, and it's kind of ironic that we're rerunning this episode now, is that like we're kind of back into this, you know, potential quarantine period again. And I think this was a lot like this was a lot of people's first time with alone time. And I think it also propelled a lot of relationships like yours, I feel like. <laughs> yeah, I think the pandemic really um, you know, amplified the, the idea of loneliness for me because to think about how our society has progressed is like during when my parents were my age, they lived around other people. They lived on top of other people. There were villages of people. So you're never, you don't feel that loneliness as much, but now during our generation, due to just the way we live and social media, how we use our technology, we're just so siloed. So we feel the loneliness a lot more. And you know, just in my relationship alone, we had been together for a year and a half at the beginning of the pandemic. And in that first month during quarantine, I felt like we escalated more than we did in the last mm -hmm. year and a half. I can attest as a bystander. <laughs> 
<laughs> and it also just made me think, holy cow, for it, what were we doing the last year and a half? I could put a yeah. number on it. I can give you a duration, but it really didn't equate to much when it came no. to progression of our relationship. And so from March until now, I feel like we progress in my eyes like dog years. It's been like, yeah. you know, seven years in the, in the last few months, just purely because we had dedicated time to talk about our relationship. And I think that's the same thing with like just relationships getting off the ground or turbo relationships, right? It's like that, you know, you could be dating someone. That's why time never matters. Like we always talk about this. Like you could be dating someone for six months. If you see them once a week or like once a month, some people don't even see people on a regular schedule. Like that's not the same as if you're like in it every day with someone. And I think, I think that is the beauty of right now is that people are like, I think it's the beauty if it's not coming from purely a place of loneliness. I think that's where it does get a little dangerous. Mm -hmm. If like it's coming from like, okay, I've reevaluated evaluated what's important to me in a relationship is and I'm going to go all in I think that's one thing versus like I have nothing else to watch on Netflix like I think those are Mm -hmm. two different stories something else we've talked about on this podcast is what you were saying earlier Julie is that relationship chicken we're all so wanting to not I mean not wanting but give off the perception that we're not trying to rush into a relationship in fact we're all holding back that DTR conversation nobody's trying to make a move and progress the relationship and that's not how you learn from relationships we can do all this personal development all we want but if you're trying to get better at relationships you got to relate to someone in a relationship right so (laughs) I, I think these turbo relationships the beauty of them is that you are going fuck it i'm just gonna try it i'm gonna do it. i'm yeah. gonna put all my fears and pride and ego aside and do it yep i think though okay so as someone that's been single throughout some of the pandemic hasn't been the entire time but like i have not experienced this like lonely feeling i really haven't mm-hmm. like i i i like try to be like am i just you know getting too <laughs> too used to being on my own or like am i just like preoccupied with like the podcast and other stuff but i think what i've come out with is that it does loneliness does not like this is kind of back to what don was saying is like i was even talking to my mom now that i'm back in boston she's saying i felt lonely and she's sitting there with my dad every day so oh, it's not yeah. always like if you're in a relationship or not i think like I think learning to deal with like being alone and having a low in space, whether like, again, whether you're in a relationship or not is an important skill because there's always going to become a time in your life that you are alone. You know, whether that's you break up with someone or totally. God forbid something happens. Like it's just, it's never like a sure thing. You know, you have to learn that skill. Yep. But it's not about it. Like you said, it does. It shouldn't stem from the fear of being alone. It should be from you are fulfilled being alone. And now you're looking to for someone to compliment you. Yes, exactly. To share exactly. life with. That's basically what it is. And that's what a turbo relationship is. I can't wait to get into this conversation because we had some um, groundbreaking moments. <laughs> I feel like also to point out we've had this guest on before. Kevin was one of our very early guest and he was actually one of my old bosses which is yes. really funny it's like coming full circle but he was like one of our season two guests and I feel like UA you shed some light that really changed his outcome with relationships and we've always said this too is that we've seen how much he's changed since oh that first gosh. call and I really think this this second one I think this is going to be what gets him over that full path you know oh, like he's, he's he's basically there I'm yeah, so proud like, of him. I know. Like, I feel like you kept saying when I was editing this, you're like, so many women are going to reach out. And I'm like, they are. Because this, first of all, it's like, he's such a great storyteller. So I think people are in for a treat for that yeah. alone. But he just, you know, he is like an enlightened male. I love just like how much he thinks about things and just, you know, like he really is so close. I could feel it. Yeah, he's so evolved. So listen up, single women out there. Also, he's willing to travel. So it doesn't matter geographically where you're located. Just listen up. Okay. But first, we do want to uh, make some announcements, especially about the sounding board, because we've had our second successful big event now. Um, It was with 
uh, Kimmy Seltzer, we talked about how to make the best first impression. Whether you're dating or not, it's it's always great to put, put your best foot forward, especially in a time where we're all wearing sweatpants all the time. Mm-hmm. I'm wearing Zoom makeup because I'm too lazy to wear real best makeup. Best hack ever. <laughs> best hack ever. But Kimmy came in and was like, listen up, everyone. You, you got to still put your best foot forward because that the perception you're giving off still needs to be one that's put mm-hmm. together and that you are you are great you know you're like a put together person yep it was so, so fun doing like the break like first of all people like d- definitely were super excited that they got to see like a dateable guest in like a small environment like mm-hmm. you know it's like we have this in an intimate way with limited people on purpose. You can kind of do that one-on-one. You can ask questions. Like we had, I mean, we had breakout sessions and Kimmy was in one room, like showing yes, people how so to like fun. work Zoom because it's an art to do virtual dates and, and like she, video calls. Yeah, And she gave she, them an actual makeover, a live yeah, makeover. One girl, one, Gisella, one woman changed. Shout out to yeah. Gisella. <laughs> she changed her top. <laughs> <laughs> she looked completely different. It was great. It, I mean, yeah. not not that she looked bad before, but it was just so fun seeing like a live makeover. In my breakout room, we looked at dating profiles and we learned a couple things. One is like, it's good to vary up your photos. I think everyone mm-hmm. knows where their good side is. So they tend to have the same photo with the same side. Yeah. And when you put it all together and if someone's like swiping through the same sort of photo, it they think like there are no other sides of you. They're, they're like, why is, why is it only the left side of her face? Is there something wrong yeah. with the right side of her face? <laughs> and the order of your photos really does matter too. If you have three photos that look alike in, mm-hmm. in one order, it makes someone like not want to keep swiping because they think they're going to be seeing the same things so we learned a lot in that group you know what's so funny is that we put on a fa- I actually okay I took this from someone I saw on a dating app because I thought it was amazing like his okay. hinge profile his hinge profile and I put it on Instagram like a little bit ago and it was um a socially distant yet emotionally available like so and then there was some other stuff and it is on our merch line which we'll get to in a second too but one, one of the girls in my breakout session Kendra she had posted on Instagram like I'm so stealing this and in her profile that was the first line I'm like, <laughs> I'm like literally every dateable listener that's gonna be their line I'm not I'm gonna admit I put it in mine too it's such a good line it is such a good line. And it's Little. not like you are going to be swiping through. Well, actually, no. Someone could look at yours and Kendra's no, <laughs> back to back. Not, no, we're not at the same location. Okay. No. All right. All right. So good. 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 The, the funny part is little does this guy know that this is like now the dateable line for your profile. Yeah. It's like an inside joke. <laughs> <laughs> you know who's so, in the group. <laughs> exactly. And you're wearing red. That's what we decided. It's like right. No dateable yeah. Listeners. It's the same. But, it's the same profile. But the sounding board is, has been so much fun. We're so getting fun. to know all of the members. Our membership keeps growing, but we're keeping it small at the same time. It's not like we're we're you know, we're keeping it unlimited. Um, but we've been learning a lot from each other. And, it, you know, like as someone who is not single, I'm also learning quite a bit about yeah. how I can show up better for my partner and how I can just get better at life. We have a lot of non-single people in actually, like mm. people, whether they're start, I mean, we have people that are engaged. We have people that are starting brand new relationships. You know, it's like, all across the spectrum we had breakout sessions one of the groups outside of dating profiles and zoom dates was how to not wear sweats for your partner Mm -hmm. like what is the transition when you're basically living together and you're like you know living your best covid life or maybe that's like a sentence that no one should ever say (laughs) you know what i mean you know the sweat the sweat uniform so (laughs) i think there's something for everyone here so yeah if you're not a member yet like definitely sign up it's dateable podcast dot com slash sounding board i look today we only have five slots left in the upper tier exclusive relationship with the coffee chats with us so if you want to talk to us over coffee we've had such great chats with people and (laughs) i I mean there's five more slots just say it's out there and then also if you're not into events we have another tier that gives you this amazing audio series that people have been saying our first episode was all about like squashing limiting beliefs so you know especially as we roll into another quarantine people like this is the time to do self-development again right (laughs) yes and another perk of the sounding board is you get a discount to our merch store that just dropped and people are loving it things are are looking great 
<laughs> I think my favorite line is the still the quarantine from fuckboys line. We have a lot of good lines. So we, good. So socially good. Socially distant yet emotionally available. There was a few few of those sweatshirts that were bought this weekend. We posted <laughs> some samples on our Instagram of what you're looking at. We've got hoodies. We've got, I'm just going to show it here. We've got a line for your fur babies. They're little hoodies for your doggies. We've got a Mugs. phone cases. Look, I'm just going to scroll through my just phone. Just go through them all. <laughs> We've got. They're oh, on Instagram too. They're on Instagram. That, that. that one no, didn't show up for some we've reason. We've got. There we we've go. Got a little like tank tops. We've got a DTF mask. We've got a fanny pack. We've got off the shoulder V neck shirts. All masks, kinds. A of, lot of masks. So much. You know, cute I mean, stuff. people are always like, "Why won't anyone talk to me during COVID in real life? You just gotta wear a <laughs> DTF mask." Just saying. Yeah, DTF down to FaceTime. That's all right, it is. Right. Exactly. Exactly. It's not Get that your serious. Down to the gutter. <laughs> down to food. I don't know. Something. <laughs> something along the lines of that. I think men should definitely get the uh, socially distant yet emotionally available. If I saw a dude wearing that, I'd be all about it. Just saying. I would stop him in the street and be like, oh, totally. do you listen to Dateable? <laughs> You're cool in my book. <laughs> exactly. So, yeah. Yeah. Sounding board, <laughs> datablepodcast.com slash sounding board. Or if you want to just shop our merch store, that's datablepodcast.com slash shop. And also on other news, so you get a discount already that is a little heftier if you join the sounding board. So still recommend that. But we are throwing out a discount for black friday slash cyber monday i feel like there's no black friday this slash year shopping so. <laughs> at home in your pjs eating turkey a day <laughs> i feel like is anyone gonna like go to malls this year you know how like people go to like those yes like, line up you yeah there'll will? be like five people in line at 6 a.m who are thinking why did i line up at 6 a.m well if you're anything like me and you don't want to do that you can just go to datablepodcast.com slash shop and get all the goods That's and it starts on friday way. julie the um, sale. Yes, we're going to start Cut. the sale on Friday. So Cyber Monday-ish Black Friday. We'll just do a merge this year. Just call <laughs> it one. We need a new name for it. Just put it in your calendar as Dateable Friday. Okay. Day after you eat all that turkey. By the way, happy early Thanksgiving, everyone. Yeah. For anybody who's I know, listening to this I right before I feel Thanksgiving. Like- I feel like yeah, that was it's it's so hard because we're like a little in the future. We're a little in the past talking to the future because we do, <laughs> we do recordings on Sunday night and release on Wednesday or Tuesday nights. If you're a subscriber, so if you're if you're not subscribed, get it fast. So definitely you can get it early if you subscribe on Tuesdays, Wednesdays for everyone else. So yeah, um, it's kind of crazy that it's Thanksgiving already. It just snuck up this year. I feel it like. is Thanksgiving. We got our present a little bit early this oh, year. Yeah. I guess you don't really get presents for Thanksgiving <laughs> but um Datable got our present was we f- were featured on Apple Podcasts in the new and noteworthy section right next to Kamala Harris which is insane oh. I hope she knows is she like texting all <laughs> her friends new, she's her, <laughs> our new subscriber obviously is she texting other people like oh my god I was featured on Apple Podcasts right next to the Datable girls it, it's it you know like one day we just looked at our metrics and we were like holy cow everyone's listening right now I our know. numbers tripled or something in one oh, day it's crazy and we couldn't figure out where it was coming from but who was the one that found my friend it? brett oh my brett. Friend brett hi I, hey brett he like texted me he's like by the way do you know that you're uh new and noteworthy <laughs> on apple podcast and i was like no i didn't know that Thank no you. wonder because we were like oh did a celebrity tweet about us or yeah. did eliza schlesinger finally come around but no she did <laughs> maybe it. she will now maybe she will now no it was great i was actually just trying to pull up a text that you sent me on thanksgiving last year but i couldn't find it so oh. i was trying to do it by memory but you were like happy thanksgiving partner in crime this is our year i remember you sending it this is our year by the way partner in crime okay partner in crime someone did ask us why do people keep saying partner in crime what does it really mean should i just look this up now while you keep talking about our ratings and reviews you might not have actually said that word i can't remember i'll I'll clarify it for people next week but i think you did i don't know but anyways yeah no this was a really big week for us so we're super excited for all the new listeners that are joining us definitely recommend going through some of the old episodes too there's a lot of good stuff especially if you're feeling like you need a lot of pandemic 
dating yeah. we did a lot of that in season 10 so quarantine from fuck boys is definitely a good one to start with or six feet apart so there's a lot there but yeah i think the only downside that was probably like not the good thanksgiving gift is we yeah. did get some you know ratings and reviews that weren't as favorable and i think no you know, shitty reviews let's just call it what it is <laughs> shitty reviews I was to sugarcoat it i know julie's so and nice she's like, like not so great no fucking reviews no, that I, make you want to cry or make did, me want to cry <laughs> i know it sucks i mean also i'm just like okay like some of them were great feedback which mm-hmm. you know we will thank take you in. all for that yeah yeah like some especially with some of the intro time and all that such good feedback i think the ones though that i'm like i mean there was one guy that literally i looked at his and he wrote like nah for like five pages of podcast like one star i'm like who has the time to do that like that's the thing though that does kind of bother me about it and i'm just gonna go on like a two second rant here because i've listened to podcasts before it's not gonna be everyone's cup of tea but I know that it's someone's cup of tea and I know someone spent a shitload of time making it. This stuff takes a long time, people. So I think like my take on it, it's like, if you don't like it, just move on. You didn't pay for anything. There's no need to like leave a review. I, and my problem with all of this is again, it comes back to communication. If you have constructive feedback or you yeah. just really want to give us some feedback of any kind, email us or DM us. It's We love hearing feedback. But getting a bad review is equivalent to your boss saying you've been doing a great job your whole year. And then during your annual review, your boss is like, you fucking suck. (laughs) You're going to be demoted. So it's like that. Let's just, I don't know. We're trying to open up the conversation. If there is something that you think we can do to get better, which is something we're constantly looking to do, Mm -hmm. feel free to reach out to us. We're totally open to feedback. But it is, if you want some entertainment on a Saturday (laughs) night, read through all the bad reviews not just on our podcast on all the podcasts oh you'll down, go down a, a rabbit hole <laughs> there is a there is like data that says people either leave five stars or one stars yeah and usually it's one like usually if you haven't been listening for a while you don't even leave five unless people like i talked to like some friends that you know left reviews which has been amazing they're like i've never left anyone a review just because it's not top of mind mm-hmm. but then there's like these trolls out here that are leaving reviews all the time with people but i do want to point out one of them that actually actually made me laugh about my chaotic dating life and <laughs> I wish my dating life was chaotic I just want yeah. to say that <laughs> yeah it was a it was a comment about how um it, it seems like one of the hosts just has a chaotic dating life right that was basically what, what it was but I'm also like okay like when we talk about a topic we're taking like collective 10 years of experience right it's not like this is happening all the time You know, like if you're going to take 10 years of experience on any topic, it's going to sound chaotic. But anyways, it's giving me hope. I would love a chaotic dating life again. Just saying. (laughs) And truth be told, don't people like to hear about chaotic dating lives? Isn't that why some people tune in? (laughs) Is because we want to hear about it. Also, like no shade to our married listeners. Love you guys. And I'm so glad that you're tuned in. But this person was married. I'm also like, there's so many podcasts for people that are married. We're not claiming to be that. Like, that's not what we're claiming mm, to be at all. Mm. So anyways, you it is what it is. Everyone. It is what it is. Yeah. But yeah, um, I love I love that Julie's getting like, this is her first time experiencing these negative reviews. And this is like my, I don't know, 15th year doing <laughs> like having bad reviews about me. When I first put my shit out there on YouTube, I got comments like, she's so fucking ugly. Go back to China. Chink eyes, you know, stuff oh, like that. God. And I'm like. You know, I was depressed for a year and then I got over it. And now I feel like nothing can really phase me, but don't test I me know, there either. I know, I know. It's like, I know, because I've heard other podcasters say that there's like um, other big podcasters out there, won't say names, but like they're really great at handling their reviews. Like yeah. they're just like, look, like it's super easy for you to leave a bad review. Like we're busting our ass to do this. You know, if you don't like yeah. it, move on. So. It's true. It's true. And, and we are super grateful for everyone who leaves a review. And yes. I mean, that's really the point of it. So thank you all, whether you love us or hate us. Thank you for taking the time, I guess. And, and I do want to want to help if you guys want to, if, the dedicated dateable listeners want to help rise us up again, though, please leave us a rating and review. You know how much it helps us. If you haven't yet, you know, do it to help us out. Drown out the bad stuff. Exactly. It's our Thanksgiving gift to us. Yes, it's our wish. I do want to circle back to partner in crime just because we had, you know, we had someone ask, like, why do you think? the important stuff, right? Why do you use the term partner in crime? Partner in crime is used 
just for people who get each other's, who have each other's back no matter what. And that's why people use that when describing their ideal partner is that they want someone who has yeah. their back no matter it's... what, especially when they're committing a crime together. <laughs> that's I mean, it comes it's from. definitely a little generic. No one's going to doubt that, but I don't mind it. If I saw it on a profile, it wouldn't be like a swipe, a swipe left for me. It wouldn't be like a hell yeah, but I wouldn't be like, oh uh, no, you know? Yeah, it shows commitment. Yeah. Any other announcements? I think the only other ones, you know, join our Facebook group, join in like or join Instagram, follow us on Instagram. We have a lot of really great video clips we do on Instagram, and we're also bringing back Would You Rather next week. So definitely get on Instagram. That's a good place to see us. And then, of course, love in the time of Corona every day in there. Every day it makes me smile. It's the best place on the internet, hands down. <laughs> um, yes, totally objective in that <laughs> thinking, of course. It's the best place on the internet okay, if you have to go I, somewhere. I do need to say, though, I'm giving a shout out to one of our uh, listeners, one of our you know, favorite listeners. Oh, actually, you're, you're all our favorite listeners. But Caitlin, who we love oh, so much. Love She's Caitlin. in the sounding board. She does. She helps doing hosting and all that. She put up a blog article today that she shared with us. And it like literally almost, it made me tear up. And she basically had moved to California at the start of the year thinking like, this is going to be the great start to a new adventure. <laughs> Not thinking that fucking COVID would hit. And I think this has been a great help for people, especially if you're in a new place right now. Like that has got to be hard. I think one of my saving graces of, you know, being single and not feeling so lonely is just like years and years of friendship. So I totally feel like being in a new place is I, I feel for people in that situation. And she wrote that like the dateable like love in the time of Corona group and now what we're doing at the sounding board has like literally been her saving grace and the friendship she's made have been incredible and has got her through this entire pandemic. And it made me super happy to see that. Thank you, Caitlin. You look fantastic in red. And also she is <laughs> single. All right, gentlemen, single. And, <laughs> she huh? didn't know she was going to get that Gentlemen shout out. I love in it. California. <laughs> I, actually, I do want to point so out Cal. that. <laughs> yeah, she's in SoCal. My friend Ryan, uh, Julie, you've met Ryan in New York. Oh, yeah. Who he said, you know what? Why don't you guys feature eligible singles on like a you know on a monthly basis or something like that, where they can come on the show, introduce themselves, and then just put their themselves out there. I'm like, that's actually a pretty good idea. We might start doing that. That also sounds a little like the event that we have coming up that we're kind of brainstorming right now for the Saudi. That's board true. After the new year, so that's I think true. He's a mind reader right now. He is. He is. Say <laughs> kick. Now, turbo relationships, shall Let's we? Let's hear it for Katan.